Good morning, everyone, and it's my great pleasure to be able to join you today, at least virtually to join you. And I'd like to particularly thank Neve O'Reilly, Katie O'Rourke and John Darcy Vaintos for inviting me to address you all at the closing event of this year's Festival 2022. The theme of this year's event is community education, working together to address educational equality. Intis and the community education sector have long tackled education inequality by providing inclusive and flexible learning environments that are accessible to all members of our community. I'd also like to thank sincerely Neve for her fantastic work on chairing the Mitigating Against Educational Disadvantage group. This group included stakeholders from across both further education training and higher education, including community education, and it crucially looked at the impact of COVID on learners. The group highlighted educational disadvantage issues and informed us as policymakers how they might be best addressed. Due to this incredible work, for the first time ever, a Mitigating Against Education Disadvantage Fund was established in 2020. And the aim of this fund was to provide funding to support educationally disadvantaged learners in accessing and participating in community education. 5.8 million euro was awarded to 507 community education projects funded through our 16 education and training boards. And I'm delighted to say in light of the great success of the fund in 2020 and in recognition of the continuing challenges in relation to ongoing COVID-19 restrictions and the impact of that on learners, a further 6.8 million was granted under the fund again in 2021, comprising and funding over 1,000 initiatives. The projects funded varied from projects to help support online learning, connect communities and providing social supports to the most disadvantaged. The fund included logistical and IT support, the installation of air purifiers, installing Wi-Fi in local centres and providing essential educational materials for learner groups who are economically disadvantaged. It also included access to devices for learning online, in particular for older people and for one-parent families, and it provided outreach, home visits, phone calls and poster learning packs. I'm pleased to say that all of these measures went some way to help in alleviating those who in other circumstances may have been left behind in what has been an extremely uncertain and worrying time. The power of adult learning, especially community education, cannot be underestimated in its potential to transform people's lives. It allows learners to fulfil their educational aspirations, whether it's to help your child with their homework, to learn a new skill in retirement, or as a stepping stone to another education or training opportunity, or to a job. I've always said that further education and training is for everyone, and no size fits all. In keeping with the theme of this year's festival, you can learn your way. And I think what a great theme. There's no right or wrong way to do education. There's just different ways. And community education is an important component of this as it aims to enhance learning, empower individuals and contribute to civic society by enhancing individual and community development. Making the initial step into adult learning can be scary, but community education provides that safe space for people to take that first step back into our education system. And finally, today, and importantly, I'd like to thank the learners watching here. At any Antis event, I'm always blown away by the valuable insight of the learner experience. Indeed, that learner experience is our most valuable resource in monitoring and adapting processes and strategies. And I sincerely thank Antis for amplifying that voice so effectively. Gurmila Magufu.